What's up guys, welcome to Rogue Reviews. My name is Nolan, and today I'm gonna to be breaking down that incredible Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer for you guys. This trailer is very interesting. A lot of people are set using the word misdirect, and I believe that does apply to some of the cases in this trailer. And some of the ideas I think they put there on it for a reason, I should say. So without further ado, let's just get into this trailer. All right, pausing right away. First shot, we have Kylo Ren, lightsaber on his belt. He looks like he is in a First Order factory or warehouse of some type. They have the old style AT-ATs, and I also see a couple AT-STs walking around on the bottom there. Very interesting. So let's keep going here. When I found you. Snoke talking. I saw. Here we go, we'll pause right here. So we have the huge Gorilla ATM 6s I'm kind of surprised though when they said like Gorilla Walkers, I thought it would just be more of a look like, I didn't think it would like be the hand, they actually like walk on the hand, that was pretty interesting. You can also see for scale the uh, older style AT-ATs in there with them, and it also looks like Kylo Ren's command shuttle up top there. Andy Serkis' amazing voice. Tame power. We'll stop right here and look at this is a really cool shot that I think if you go back to Revenge of the Sith it mirrors that shot with Anakin walking into the Jedi Temple. This is Kylo Ren walking in with it looks like snow troopers from the top there which is interesting. Um, it looks like they're going into a cave of some sort. I'm guessing this is on crate but those red streaks with the black. Could it be Mustafar? Am I speculating too much? Maybe. But that would be pretty cool if it was Mustafar. But I, if I had if I had to put money on it right now, I'm betting this is the planet crate and they're going into a base of some kind. And beyond that. Alright, and beyond that we pause here on his lightsaber, and it looks like some Praetorian guards are behind him. I'm guessing this is in Snoke's throne room. If I had to guess where this took place in the film, I would say about the beginning. They probably are going to open up this film with Luke and Rey on Octo, but it would be an interesting kind of misdirect, as we say, to open it with Kylo and Snoke before we get to Luke and Rey. Let's keep going here. Something, Something truly special. Truly special. And then we get cuts to Rey. So is he talking about Kylo or is he talking about Rey? We'll have to wait to find out. I think it's a bit of both, actually. Great score, Lucasfilm logo. Great overhead shot of Octo. Something inside me has always been. Interesting about this shot. This is me being very nitpicky, like very, very, very nitpicky, but. Anybody notice at the end of Force Awakens it was pretty cloudy out and all of a sudden it's pretty sunny? A little bit of a continuity slip, but I, I mean, that's just me being very nitpicky. And I know they have like a certain amount of time to film on Skellig Michael Island, so I'm sure they weren't too worried about the weather. Keep going here. Now this is interesting. I think this is on Octo. I'm not certain. Um, I believe, if I had to take a guess, this is kind of where that first Jedi Temple was based. And in the bottom here, it looks like a tree. Maybe this is that Force tree that everybody was talking about. And maybe that's where the books are being stored, because if we keep going here... Ray looking over those books. So, I think that's where those books are being held. Such a cool shot. Alright, pause it right here face because he looks absolutely shocked that Ray just broke the ground. He could barely lift his lightsaber out of the snow on Hoth and then he can even lift his X-Wing and she broke a mountain. So that's cool. Oh, I love the shot with the hands and the rocks flying up. Kind of reminds me of Man of Steel when he's about to take off. And we have Ray being very concentrated. All right, we're gonna pause here right in front of Luke's temple. I love Mark Campbell's performance in this trailer, by the way. It's so 
Like some people, you know, were very worried when he came back if he would be over the top, kind of like his Joker is a pretty over the top Joker, but like even though he's very intense, I think that's the right amount of intensity that Luke should have at this point. So, pausing at this shot, I didn't notice this in the other trailer, but you see that green patch of grass. It's kind of leading me to wonder where Luke's Jedi Temple is actually located at. We know in the expanded universe, it was generally located on Yavin 4, where the uh, first shuttle base is. I don't think that's going to be the case here. Um, it looks a little like Yavin is very foresty. This looks more plain grass. I thought it might be on Tatooine in the first trailer, but I must have missed the green grass. I wonder if they would take a cue from the Knights of the Old Republic game and make it Dantooine. That would be pretty interesting because um, Dantooine, in, at least in that game, is supposed to be very hilly and farmlandy, and that's kind of what it looks here. Also, it looks like those are bodies in front of Luke. I'm viewing the trailer in 1080 here, but it's still, those are not the greatest focus. So, but it's interesting to see that Luke was actually there, like with his hand coming through the rubble, we can kind of gauge that he was there when this whole thing went down so that's interesting to note as well keep going here it does now even ray all alone on the rock and we cut to kylo so with this cut to kylo i everybody's saying oh was it kylo he was talking about with the you know the great raw strength and i think it is i don't think that's a misdirect Everybody's like, oh, maybe Benicio Del Toro's a Sith. Maybe he's talking about Snoke. Maybe he's talking about his father. Remember when he saw his father, you know, he was more machine than man. You know, he was barely, like, Vader was obviously very powerful in the Force, but he was even more powerful, I think, when he was still Anakin, had all its limbs, because I don't know if this is still canon, but I always remember them saying the more limbs you lost and, like, the more the less human you became the lesson the uh, grip on the force you had so i wonder if they'll keep with that so we have kylo with his helmet here about to bash it Let the past die. and then he shows he's got his piloting skills all right if you have to pause right here because he notices that he's on that ship this was the the heartbeat of the trailer for me to be honest i love this little exchange they do if I had to place this in the movie, I think this is the beginning of the movie. I think this is when they're evacuating Dakar and Snoke is like, Kylo, go and wipe them all out. And I don't think if we keep going here. The only way to become what you were meant to be. Looking to target the bridge of the Radis. I don't think he does it though. The other interesting thing is who is Kylo talking to in that voiceover? Some people have speculated Ray. That would be interesting. Actually, that's about the only person I could think he would be talking to with that. But if that, if he's saying that to her, I think that takes place later in the film. Got it this Christmas. Got the Falcon flying through someplace here. I think this is still on crate because we have all those red overtones you can see. Um, keep going. Chewie and the Porgs. All right, so we got Poe talking, and you could see in that one shot, um, they talked about Poe's X-wing is built in with a like a very one-time, like almost like nitrous boost that he can only use so often. I think he uses in this trailer. And here we go. Pause right here. The matchup we've been waiting for. Captain Phasma actually does something. Finn looks pretty awesome, and he's got the uh, traitor staff. Stop right here. This is an awesome shot. You can see Finn in the reflection of the helmet. That spike is uh, very important. Also, I just got done reading the Phasma book, and that was a very interesting book. I won't give any spoilers here, but it was very almost more Mad Maxi than Star Wars in a in a good way. And uh, Phasma, there's a reason she wears that helmet. I would check out that book if you guys are interested. Great read. Keep going here. This All right, BB-8 gets shocked, and in the background here, there's a green planet, which that I'm interested in because crate seems like it'd be like the white or red from above, and I don't think it's Octo. I'm wondering what planet this is. There's rumors about Endor. Um, could it be Naboo, if that's where Luke's temple was? 
It'll be interesting. Not going to go Crystal Foxes. All right, I love that shot of Leia. Also, this line with Luke, this is not going to go the way you think. Two things on this line. I think this line is put in on purpose as a trailer line to tell the audience, hey, <laughs> this isn't going to be a repeat of The Empire Strikes Back. This is something completely different. Also, within the context of the movie, I think this is him talking to Rey and Kylo. I think this is when Rey and Kylo are teaming up to do what? We'll talk about that at the end here. All right, we have Rey diving down here, and there's a skull right here. That looks pretty interesting. I think she's diving down. There was a, uh, a leak of a pinball machine game from The Last Jedi. You can see Luke's crashed X-Wing underwater with like some moss growing on it. I'm wondering if she's diving down trying to get to that X-Wing for something. She comes up here. Okay, here is where I think they, they misdirected us. We go back to this shot. Her hair's all pulled back. We go to the shot here where Luke is in the mist. You can see her hair is clearly down. I think, if anything, this shot is towards the end of the movie. It looks like uh, Finn's infiltration of the First Order did not go well. Here we have another awesome shot of that big hangar. It looks like we have some snow troopers, regular troopers, TIE fighters, some captains. Probably right before the battle on Crate, if I had to take a guess. Alright, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the CGI and Snoke. Um, I wasn't thrilled with him in The Force Awakens. I mean, he looked fine, and I knew it was a transmission, but I, it's still, like, I'm like, ah, Andy Serkis felt like, you know, like, they would really bring everything, especially with his work on Planet of the Apes. I mean, he does such great work, but this looks like it belongs in that category. This looks like ILM really knocked it out of the park. And fulfill your destiny. Go to the shot here, and Ray is freaking out. And you can see Snoke's gold robe in the background. You can also see a Praetorian guard in the background here. What is he doing to her? I do not know. And her destiny. I think her and Kylo are more intertwined here than you would think. So let's get to that part. I need someone. Show me my place in all, all this. right, Kylo, scar healed, hand out, and that was the moment everybody went, what? All right, tickets available now. All right, well, let's talk about the context of this trailer and where I think it leads. I think by the end of this movie, one of three things are going to happen. First one. Ray stays on the light side. Kylo, um, I think, will kill Snoke and become that thing that even his grandfather couldn't. He's going to be in complete control of the First Order. He's going to be the Emperor of the Galaxy. He is going to be the ultimate big baddie, which his grandfather never got there. Second thing I think is going to happen, a switch. Ben is going to come back to the light. Ray, Snoke's going to twist her to the dark. And that's where we're going to leave this movie, which would, that would be interesting. Third option. This is the one I think is going to happen, and it's going to surprise some people. I think Ray and Kylo both denounce their dark side and light side, their Jedi and Knights of Ren or Sith training, and I think they're going to go off with each other. Um, not a whole Raylo situation, but it could be. Um, that would be interesting. Because uh, J.J. in the DVD commentary of The Force Awakens did describe his kind of thoughts of them as like a Romeo Juliet. We know Ryan Johnson likes a lot of Raylo art on Twitter, so never know. But I think this movie might end with them going off and maybe then the First Order and the Resistance are hunting them down for whatever reason. I don't know. I think there is a lot... Like, like everybody says, there's a lot of misdirection, but I think the ideas they're trying to set up is that Rey and Kylo are intertwined more than we thought, and to not really be surprised if they team up at some point in this movie, which I think is going to happen one way or another. So we shall see what that will look like. 
All right, guys, those are my theories for the Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer breakdown here. What would you guys think of the trailer? What are some of your guys' theories of what's going on here? Where do you think they're misdirecting us and everything? Comment below and let's uh, let's start a discussion, guys. All right, make sure to subscribe to Rogue Reviews for more awesome content, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Wow.